Hey guys, welcome to another installment of Ask Dr. Mike. This time, all of the questions are coming from you. So I'm really excited to answer all of your questions. Let's get to it. I had a question I just recently got my wisdom teeth taken out and I have four huge holes in my mouth. How can I get them to close as quick as possible. Getting your wisdom teeth taken out is definitely a painful experience. I had all four of mine taken out and they were all impacted. It really did hurt, so I feel you. There is no secret way to speed up the healing process. The best thing that you can do is prevent infection by keeping the area clean. Really, what's the number one thing that you shouldn't do is smoke. Smoking does prolong healing time, and that's the number one thing that we talk to our patients during surgeries, is that they should stop smoking as soon as possible. So I just find out that I'm gluten intolerant. Can you explain what is gluten intolerance, why it can happen, and what is the effect to my body if I still consume gluten? Can I eat like one, two, three, four, or five small bites for a treat for myself? Is it dangerous? Thanks a lot, Mike. Bella. Gluten intolerance is a very popular subject right now. But the way that I like to break it down to my patients is that there's two types of gluten issues. One is celiac disease. You've heard about it in the news, and celiac disease is actual damage in your intestines from eating gluten, which is a protein byproduct of wheat. In celiac disease, when you consume wheat, your body has an autoimmune response, which means that your own body attacks its own cells because of an overreaction to the wheat product and you get physical damage in your intestines. Now, the second part of this is something called non-celiac wheat sensitivity. There's people that are sensitive to wheat, but not necessarily to the gluten component. In non-celiac wheat sensitivity, we don't have the research to back up what happens if you continue eating wheat. However, my opinion, you should not eat wheat because it's gonna make you feel better. You'll be in less of a fog. You'll have less diarrhea, less bloating. So if you do have symptoms from eating wheat, just don't eat it. Okay. That's a great question, Fayez. And it really does give strength to the statement that you can die of too much of anything. So yes, you can die of taking too much water because you limit your body's ability to properly manage the electrolytes within your system. Electrolytes are crucial for managing everyday life functions like making your brain work, your heart work, or even your kidneys. What do you recommend for people with IBS? Cause we both want to repair our intestines on a daily basis. Thanks, Dr. Mike. Hey girls, if you do have IBS and it's true, treatment depends on which type of IBS you have. There's IBS that's mostly diarrhea predominant. There's IBS constipation predominant. And there's also a mixed version as well. For mild disease or symptoms, you can do some dietary modifications. There's a specific diet that we put patients on who suffer from IBS called the FODMAP diet. What that diet does is it excludes certain foods that your body is unable to digest and the bacteria in your stomach are able to digest, so it causes that uncomfortable bloating feeling, pain, and it really does mess with your bowel movements. If you're able to eliminate those types of foods, people do see an improvement in their symptoms. If you do have a moderate or severe form of the illness, there are medications that you can use to treat your illness. However, in order to get those medications and to find out what medications are suited best for your symptoms, it's important to go see your doctor. Hi, Dr. Mike. My question for you is, how can I improve my eczema? Um, because none of the products that my dermatologists have recommended towards me or pretty much anything that I've been attempting to doing hasn't really worked that well. What can I do myself, like involving nutrition or stuff that I can kind of control that's not super financially expensive? Eczema is a very tricky illness and I understand your frustration. If you've already seen a dermatologist, they've probably discussed some of the treatment options with you, uh, talking about UV light therapy, steroid creams, maybe even medications that affect your immune system. But like you said, those are expensive modifications, expensive treatments, some of them do come with side effects. Links between eczema flares and diet has been a popular subject that's been up for debate. It's not clear what the link is, but we certainly know that a link does exist. I don't like recommending to my patients eliminating certain foods from their diets, but this is a great time to have a conversation with your dermatologist or your primary care doctor to get tested for food allergies because there is a relationship in those who have food allergies to those who have worsening eczema. If you're able to find out early on that you have a food allergy and you're able to eliminate that specific food from your diet, it's possible that your eczema flares will decrease or at least that when they do happen, they won't be as bad. Hey, Dr. Mike. 
My question for you is, how and when did you know which area of medicine you wanted to specialize in? I chose family medicine specifically because I love continuity of care. I love being able to communicate with my patients every single day, and also I love not limiting myself to focusing on one specific body part or organ. I think the beauty of family medicine lies in that I'm able to see the effect my treatment has on my patient. I'm able to see how it improves their lives, and that's incredibly rewarding. Hi, Dr. Mike. I'm involved in a lot of sporting activities and I tend to sprain my ankles when I play sports. I was wondering if there's anything that I can do to help strengthen my ankles like an exercise. That way I won't hurt them as much as I do. Hey Anna, the way that you prevent ankle injuries is through improving your proprioception which is your body's ability to know where your limbs are at all times, even without seeing them. The best way to strengthen your ankle and prevent injuries is to do proprioception exercises. The first one that I want all my patients to try is to stand on one foot, of course without a sneaker, with their hands to their sides, eyes open, and see how long they can hold that position. Then, to make the exercise a little harder, you can take your arms and put them at your sides, which will make it, the balancing a little bit more difficult. And then the next part, very challenging, is to do the same thing with your arms at your sides, but close your eyes and see how long you can hold that position. The longer you can hold that position, the less likely you are to have an ankle injury. You can certainly see your physical therapist who will teach you more advanced exercises and work with you directly to prevent future injuries. I see over and over again people claiming that vitamin D is the cure-all for all illnesses. And clearly it's not the case. There's been a huge uproar and uptick in studies and articles coming out recently saying that Americans are taking too much vitamin D now. I've said this maybe two months ago in a YouTube video called Are Vitamins Fake News? Check out that video and see the real deal on vitamin D. Um, I would like it if um, you could explain to people why asthma has many different levels, um, why some people find one puff of an inhaler will help them and other people with severe asthma like myself need nebulizers and oxygen therapy because I feel like people still take asthma as a bit of a joke and they seem to think that um, people with asthma are hypochondriacs and things. I've spent many times in ICU, I've been critically ill, I've had pleurisy, I've had many things and I've been told by friends, you know, if you're going to be making that noise, can you go home because you're annoying me, I've been asked if I could be quiet. So if you could maybe feature this and answer the question, that would be amazing and I would really appreciate it because I feel like <laughs> I'm talking to a brick wall when I try to explain to people, coming from a doctor, it might be better. Thanks Mike! First of all, to all those who said asthma is a joke, they are completely wrong, they don't know what they're talking about, and I'm so sorry you had to go through that. Asthma is a very serious illness, and I've had to intubate otherwise healthy 16-year-olds with illness. There are levels to asthma. You have mild asthma, moderate asthma, and severe asthma. There's further classifications, but that's for your doctor to worry about. And the difference between the levels of asthma is the difference between the types of medications you need to take. So for the more severe asthma, you're gonna to need to take controller medications, ones to prevent asthma attacks from happening in the first place, versus for mild intermittent asthma, you can just have a rescue inhaler and use it as needed. You clearly have a more advanced case of asthma, so you do need to be on a controller medication, and I'm so sorry you had to go through all of this ridicule from your friends, because they don't know what they're talking about. All right guys, it's time for the lightning round. What is the healthiest way to burn fat? HIT, high intensity interval training. It's where you build muscle and burn fat at the same time. How can I get fatter? Really though? Well, you could sleep less than six hours a day, eat a ton of carbs, and be a huge couch potato. How to deal with insomnia? Insomnia is tricky because you need to get a full history and a full physical exam and sometimes get some lab work done. Not an easy question to answer, go see your doctor. If you weren't a doctor, what other career would you have pursued? Detective. I love investigating and that's frankly what I do every day as a doctor. How do you remove eye bags? Eye bags make me not confident, thanks. Eye bags can be removed with a cold spoon or fillers. I've seen some great results. What type of doctor are you? Family medicine, the best specialty out there. What's the most challenging part of being a doctor? Constantly refreshing your knowledge. Things change every single day and it's important that you stay up to date. I really enjoyed answering all of your questions today. I wasn't able to get to all of the questions and if you still have something that you're itching to learn about, leave a comment down below. I'll make sure to get to it. And I hope you're excited for the next installment of Ask Dr. Mike. Leave a comment down below. I'll be sure to get to it. Why did I highlight be sure? It doesn't make any sense. And it's really one of those diagnoses. Diagnoses. Yeah, that's a mouthful. Uh -uh.